You're tuned in to the Tithing Hooks Podcast, where we offer teachings, commentary, and insights about false tithing doctrines and the prosperity gospel. In this podcast, we're going to show you why tithing is unscriptural, and why Christians aren't required to give 10% of their money to the church. Welcome to the Tithing Hoax Podcast. In this episode, we want to talk about the topic of tithing and why it's actually unscriptural. A lot of people think that they have to give away 10% of their income to a church, but that's simply not true. But before we get into that, let's get into this. Are you tired of being told to tithe? Do you want to know the truth about tithing? The tithing hoax exposes the lies the prosperity gospel preachers tell their congregations. The book reveals how prosperity preachers use fear tactics, guilt trips, and manipulation in order to get your money. You will discover why it is not biblical for preachers to demand Christians give them 10% of their income. And most importantly, this book will teach you what God really wants from us when it comes to giving. After reading this book, you won't feel guilty about keeping more of your hard-earned money. Instead, you feel confident knowing God doesn't expect a certain percentage out of your paycheck each month. He just wants us all to love Him with our whole hearts and to trust Him with everything we have. So grab a copy of the Tithing Hoax today for yourself or as a gift for someone else who might need some help understanding tithing better. Get the Tithing Hoax now on Amazon.com. Now, here is today's podcast. Many preachers say the tithe is a biblical principle that requires Christians to give 10% of their income to God. The origin of the tithe is found in the Old Testament, where it was commanded that the Israelites should give 10% of their produce to God. The New Testament does not specifically mention the tithe, but it does suggest that Christians should give generously to others in need. There are many examples of people who gave generously without tithing. David gave away huge quantities of food and other provisions to the poor, 1 Chronicles 29, 14. On one occasion when God sent rain for 40 days after many years of drought, He told Ezekiel that he should use this opportunity to demonstrate his loyalty by giving him part of the 40 days' supply of food that had been harvested during the years of drought, Ezekiel 4, 9-17. The text is not clear as to exactly how much Ezekiel gave, but it is evident that he is told that he is to take the surplus and give it to God. If we can find something we have more than enough of, for example, time, talents, or money. There's nothing wrong with sharing it with the church voluntarily, not under legalistic obligation. Is Christian tithing biblical? Many people will argue that it is. However, there is not one verse in the Bible that explicitly states that Christians must tithe 10% of their income to the church. There is also no mention of giving money to God's work being a requirement for salvation. In fact, many references in the Bible to giving are about giving freely and generously, without expecting anything in return. The Bible is clear that we should give generously to those in need, both within the church and outside of it. Christ Himself said, It is more blessed to give than to receive, Acts 20, 35. When we give from our hearts, out of love and compassion, we are living out the gospel. But when we give begrudgingly, or because we feel obligated to do so, we are not giving in the way that Christ intended. Here are five reasons why the Christian tithe is unscriptural. 1. The Old Testament laws were only applicable to the Israelites. Christ is our High Priest, and He has become one with all Christians, Galatians 3, 28-29. The law is no longer relevant to us since the arrival of Christ, and therefore the tithe is not applicable today. 2. The tithe isn't found in the New Testament. The New Testament is the second half of the Bible, which was written after the death of Christ. The Old Testament is the first half of the Bible and is focused on the Israelites. In fact, many of Christ's disciples were rich, but none of them tithed. In one case, an individual is recorded as having given a large sum of money with no mention that they tithed from it, Acts 8, 18-22. 3. In the book of Acts, it is clear that the early Christians were generous and gave generously to those in need. There is no mention of tithing in the early chapters of Acts, which is also where we would expect to find a mention if it was something the church had begun doing. In fact, there is more evidence that they were generous and not worried about making a profit from their new faith. 4. Tithing is a form of legalism. Legalism is the belief that we can earn our way to heaven by doing good works. This is not what the Bible teaches. Rather, we are saved by grace, through faith in Jesus Christ, Ephesians 2, 8-9. When we try to earn our salvation through our giving, we are missing the point of the gospel. 
Jesus died so that we might have eternal life, not so that we could impress God with our good works. For these reasons, it is clear that Christians should not tithe. Finally, none of the apostles received the tithe. When discussing the issue of giving, Peter said that almsgiving is good, provided it is practiced according to discretion, otherwise it is bad, 1 Peter 4:10. The word used for almsgiving is oikonomian, which is the same word used in Luke 16, 2-4 to, to describe the manager, of a large household, whose job is to make sure everything is in good order and is managed correctly, in other words, responsible stewardship of what is entrusted to him. So, Peter is talking about giving responsibly and isn't making a reference at all to tithing. Is tithing biblical? You can decide for yourself. But generous giving is always a good thing, and is something that Christians should be striving for. That being said, Christians often feel the pressure to tithe, but there is no evidence that tithing was ever a requirement for those who follow Jesus. Churches should focus on teaching their members about generosity and giving from the heart, rather than insisting on tithing as an obligation. When people are given the choice between tithing and feeding their families, they should be encouraged to prioritize providing for themselves first. As long as we're still living in this world with all its worries and concerns, we can't expect everyone to give away 10% of what little money or food they have left at any point in time. We pray this Tithing Hoax podcast has helped you understand more about tithing and its place in the Christian church.